Hello, everybody. Welcome to a, a sort of special episode of Night's Meaning Star. I'm not actually sure. I, it might be that one of these has already happened with some other people or or not, but this is it's like this weird thing that we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm a dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and I'm joined by just one one player this, this time. Just one. It's so different. There's just it's one so of us. It's so weird. It's just one. Uh. It's just me and you. I'm joined by Jonathan Indovino, aka Shady Penguin. And it's hey, just, guys. It's just, me and my bud. I kind of uh, like this though. This is this is this is intimate. Different. This is great. It is different for sure. It's it's, it's a. I've only done one of these once before, um. So it's going to be an interesting experience. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see how it goes. But if you're wondering why it is just me and Shady, um, today's episode is a flashback. It is going to be a sort of a flashback in time to how some things in the current latest season of Night's Evening Star have come to pass. Um, and specifically, and it's not going to be a big secret, this is going to be the story of how Tarkal uh, acquires the sword epilogue, um, oh. but also maybe resolves some things going on with Willisong and some other things going on as well. Um, and the situation of the Warlock Pact. I do have like a, a sort of rough recap um, if this happens to be the first episode you're jumping in on or if you're not 100% familiar with everything that's happened before. Um, but yeah, we're going to we're gonna see how this goes. I don't know. You, we, it, is, it is weird, isn't it? It's a I mean, little strange. Well, I, I've done one of these before as well where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, I've done two yeah. of them. Um, and oh, okay. Out, yeah, they turn out great. I love them. Uh, okay. But good, I'm, good. Excited, good. I'm excited to learn how I get epilogue because I, have, I don't have any idea. So yeah. this is great for me to learn. I, you know, that was just, I was like, hey, for this next season, here's a super powerful magic item mm -hmm. for all of you. We'll figure out how you got it later. Uh, and that's pretty much the, what I told you guys in I the build up that. for the final season. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, a little recap then, which I did sort of write out. Uh, this is mainly for the audience, but you know, maybe maybe for Shady as well. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Tarkle, uh, Tarkle Crown Silver, one of the nobles of Evening Star, unwittingly made a pact with a creature called Willow Song, who had deceived Tarkle and his companions into believing she was the daughter of an archfey called Shadowbriar, and that her mother was simply a misguided magical being being misused by mortal conspirators. But the truth soon came out that Willow Song is actually a green dragon, and so is her mother Shadowbriar, uh, who is an ancient green dragon that has been planning Cormier's downfall for ages and intended to have Tarkle and the people of Evening Star slaughtered but something about Willisong's deception had changed her. She felt protective over Tarkal and had come to enjoy the company of the simple folk of Evening Star. And so she escaped her, the mother, her mother's clutches, uh, despite a powerful spell binding her to a humanoid form, um, and then raced to Tarkal to warn them about the impending attack. But in doing so, had to reveal her true nature and the deceptions that had gone on. Um, and since then, Things have been a little tense. Things have been a little orcs, a uh, little orcs. Just, just a little uh, awkward, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, things have, have continued on. But over the year that we sort of skipped ahead on, at some point, um, throughout that year, sorry, actually, one other thing is research had been put underway by uh, Azara Mithras, uh, played by Mika, uh, as well as her researcher, Sarah Lee, and Willa Song herself had been researching in a, into a way to help Tarkle break free of the Warlock Pact that binds the two of them together. Specifically, because that pact, any damage or harm caused to, sh uh, to Willow Song is therefore done to Tarkle. And so they wanted to try and break that uh, pact. Um, and after many months of research during that year, a solution has been found. Um, and if you are ready, we're going to jump into it. I'm yeah, good. I'm ready. Oh man. Okay. All okay. Right. Cool. Um, so, uh, it is early spring. Life is returning to evening star after the winter and the walls of, and from the walls of evening star keep, you can see the Kingswood stretch on for miles and miles. It's verdant canopy of ancient woodland, like a blanket of green resting beneath the dawning sky. Someone asked to meet you here this morning and like always she makes little noise when she eventually reveals herself from the shadows cast by a nearby tower wall dressed in deep green dress and a few simple pieces of jewelry uh willow song emerges and stares at you with unreadable eyes her face framed by her straight black hair uh, and uh, she doesn't initially say anything. She just sort of appears emerging from the shadows like a cat, uh, uh, having uh, sent you a message, probably via um, one of the, the sort of keep staff that, uh, you know, that somebody wanted to speak with you or like something was expected uh, to is this with you. Is this like normal for her? 
I think that she hasn't probably, I think that over the last sort of few months, like over the winter and the late autumn, um, just before, like as part of the time skip, she has been keeping her distance. She's been working in Evening Star um, as the spy master, as the spy mistress. Um, so she may have had occasional reasons to give you information or like, you know, ask you to look into things, but always tries to keep a distance, normally kind of sends somebody else to come and speak to you or pass a letter or a note or something like that. This is probably going to be the first time in a while that she's asked to meet with you face to face. Okay. Um, um, and yeah. I obviously know that her, Sarah Lee and Azara are looking for a way to end mm. the act. Absolutely. That's... Yeah. That's not <clears throat> been a secret. Um, it's, you know, but it's, it, there hasn't been much progress on it for a while. Okay. Um, you kind of, the last thing you'd heard is that they were looking to an arch fay um, who might have a solution. Um, or might be connected to a solution in some way. Okay, and I think I guess as she approaches, Tarkal would just, uh, I think he'd just be straight to business. Um, he'd just be like, is, uh, is everything okay? Any news? Uh, uh, yes, everything is fine. And uh, yes, there is news. Uh, it, is, it is time. Uh, the solution that you want... Um, we believe that we found it, Sarah Lee and I. Where? There is an archfey called the Queen of Air and Darkness, an extremely powerful archfey uh, that was banished from the Seely Court millennia ago. Your sister would not like to hear it, but she is more powerful than a being such as the Summer King. She is uh, dangerous, but she has what we need and... I think I have come up with the best possible solution into doing so. Um, how powerful exactly? So the Summer King we know is pretty powerful. Is this, is this something we can handle? Not in a fight. Um, that would not be my intention. Uh, we would not be able to take it from her. Even the Summer King would be a difficult battle, even for all of you and your, your sister and your companions and myself combined. Uh, the Queen of Air and Darkness, however, is a, another level altogether. The Archfey are interesting beings. Their power comes from their very nature, but also is greatly connected to the realms that they command they are bound by but also have influence over the magic of stories as a sort i'm sure that as a child you were told things like fairy tales and similar stories many of them have origins within the feywild and they are more than just stories a being like the queen of air and darkness she could not be killed by mortal means. She has an ending, a predestined ending as part of her story. And it would be very difficult to overcome that. Instead, I think that this will call for a certain skill set that you and I both possess. One that your sister and your companions, I do not think will be able to help us much with. We need to steal it. A tool. Won't she, it's a tool. Won't she know that this tool is gone once we've taken it? Yes, most likely. But invading the material realm would be difficult for her to do. And she is. Let us that say that she is not a stranger to the concept of thievery. Many of the relics and and objects that she has collected herself were stolen. Uh, it is a game. The the item that we seek will likely find its way back to her collection at some point in the future. But she's not going to just give it if we ask. And we certainly don't have anything to bargain for it. And considering what got you into this situation, I did not believe that you would be willing to make a bargain or pact with her to obtain it. Uh, you don't want to walk out from one pact into another. Mm, that's true. My only, so... my only concern... Mm. You say it's difficult for her to invade the material plane. Mm. As long as that is true and we're not going to put Evening Star in danger, then... The hope is that she will not know that somebody from Evening Star has taken it, mm. even if she were to learn that it were taken. Even if that were to be the case and she discovered your identity, or uh, then I do not think that she would 
I do not think that she is the type of individual to hold a grudge against your town. You as an individual, perhaps, but that is the risk that we must wager. Myself as well. I no doubt if she learns of my involvement, then we will both be in risk, uh, in danger. But I do not believe Evening Star itself will be. That is not the Queen's way. Uh, she is cruel, but not malicious. Uh, she has a fairness to her, and she will not assign your crime to that of others. All right. You seem surprisingly calm about it i was expecting to have to convince you more no i mean every moment this pact has continued I, I feel as though we are in danger anyway that i'm in danger so if it's oh. just jumping from one danger to another i i would just like to be done with the deceit yes of course of course uh, and that is what we will do uh, I have made prepara some preparations already, and it will take us a few days to arrive um, where we need to, uh, but you have time. Um, I can also tell you my plan in more detail if there are things you wish to procure or advice that you wish to seek from the others here in town, but we must not take too much longer. The window of op opportunity is narrow. Mm. I, I, I mean, as much information as you can give me before we head out is... For the best. Mm, of course, of course. Um, then I will lay out my plan to you and we can move from there. And I would appreciate your expertise. Whilst shadows and secrets are something I'm familiar with, outright theft is uh, not so much. Um, I do not necessarily know the inner workings of things like vaults and, and locks and, and the like, but I know people. So... <laughs> And she maybe like uh, takes a seat on the wall itself, kind of like sits down and sort of like half turns so that she's looking towards the horizon and turning back to you. The Queen of Air and Darkness has a number of powerful magic relics. Um, one of these is what we seek. My research and Sarah Lee's research leads us to believe that she is in possession of a blade, a sword that can cut anything. Now that may sound like a whimsical notion, but it is not. As I mentioned, the Fae have powerful magic that can define much of what we believe to be possible and a key part of that is how much of their magic draws on concepts and ideas from stories they the realm itself emotions beliefs concepts become manifest and they have power love fear jealousy courage the seasons character archetypes or even grander concepts like beginnings and endings can have great power there so the concept of a sword that can cut anything, that can sever a life, but also cut bonds or cut away memories or similar effects um, is not completely out of disbelief. And we are confident that this is something that she has. Um, now, she has been known to make bargains and mortals uh, to borrow these sorts of relics, uh, and that is how we've learned of this blade. We believe it to be called Epilogue, I believe, um, and it has passed through the hands of several other mortals in the past, but it is currently with her in a vault hidden inside her castle. Uh, her realm is called Midnight Rhyme. Uh, it is an icy and mountainous region. Um, in the Feywild, very inhospitable, and her palace sits at the very top of its tallest peak. Its temperature and climate is unfathomably, unfathomably cold. Um, we will not be able to uh, sneak or infiltrate it uh, easily. However, I have learned that the Queen is hosting a ball and many individuals from across the plains and the mortal realms have been invited. She and her court still believe me to be an emissary of my mother, uh, of whom she has had dealings with in the past, and that has allowed me to procure an invitation. Uh, so we will attend the ball, and from there, the plan is for you to find the entrance to the vault, and then we will likely need to disable any protections uh, that is uh, surrounding it. And then once inside, locate epilogue, and then escape the palace so that I can plane shift us back to Evening Star. 
you um you've been busy you you asked me to allow you to choose this is what you wanted i endeavor to make sure you have that opportunity well i will save my thanks for after uh, once we <laughs> once we procure the blade i think that wise this will be dangerous but i do think that if we keep in mind the nature of the mission, this is not a fight. This is not a war. This is what I think we are both best at. Um, you've always had a talent for shadows. Uh, and I think that this will put it to good use. Um, if you have any other questions about my plan or of, of what we know, uh, let me know now. Um, well, we can discuss it further. Or if there's things that you wish to seek aid or equipment here in evening star to take with us i mean if we're if if this is simply a mission of it's not even breaking and entering it's it's showing up and i would like to blend in as much as possible so that when i disappear it won't be noticeable but you are uh, are, are there others like you that will be at this ball that will capture the queen's attention that was certainly my plan. Uh, whilst you are trying to locate the vault, I will try and keep the queen's attention uh, from you. Many fey, uh, the queen herself and many other fey beings, um, perhaps if there are fiends present or other magical creatures, uh, they will have the ability to see through magical illusions or disguises. But physical disguises have a certain strength within the fey realm as i mentioned their magic is very connected to things such as stories and the idea of somebody playing a role being in a costume makes it more difficult for the fey to truly know their real identity they may still know that the person is not who they claim to be but it will be like your real identity is obscured shrouded uh, I've prepared a, a suitable role uh, and disguise. Um, the Queen of Air and Darkness would not. Uh, you must. Need, you will need to be somebody of import to have a reason to attend her ball. Uh, there is a an infamous assassin that I have researched. Uh, I believe you to be similar in build and close in age. Though we will need to make you look a little older. Um, uh, called Artemis uh, Entreri. Entreri. Um, you'll be posing as, as this uh, Mr. Entreri um, for the evening. And there's no chance he shows up at this ball, right? I don't believe so. I believe him to be long dead. Oh. Uh, he's a human. and uh, But uh, there was always reports that he had uh, secured the secrets to um, a longer life. But I, I believe him to be dead. He's not been seen in decades. Okay. Um, that sounds as good a disguise as any, Willow Song. Yes. Um, well, I think that that will be most fitting. Um, I have a disguise, a set of clothes, um, makeups, costumes, prosthetics for you to use. Uh, like I said, physical disguises will trick the Fae far more than illusions will. Um, Would it be unnecessary or uh, perhaps dangerous to bring along some sort of substance in case anyone does catch me? Uh a drug maybe I can ask Hilda if she has anything. Yes, of course. Uh, you will need to be cautious. Um, magical creatures likely will have, uh, poison may have little effect on them, but there are many mortal servants of the of the queen and guards and the like. They will be as susceptible to it as, as most, I imagine. I th Anything of, of that ilk that you can think of, I think is very much worth bringing. We may also want to consider, in case we need it, some method of creating a loud or large distraction that can give us an opportunity should the worst happen. I was not exactly sure what might suffice in this regard. Um, mm. I've heard Aaron playing with loud booms from time to time across the town, so maybe he has something. Perhaps. I, I will leave that in your capable hands. Um, there are some elements which I will be able to provide. There is a spell that will allow us to communicate telepathically whilst we are inside. So even if we are split up, we will still be able to speak with each other. It will also allow me to perceive through your eyes uh, if I find a quiet moment where I can, um, I will be temporarily blinded, but it will allow me to see through your vision. If you encounter any magical wards or protections, 
Um, I will be able to analyze them and perhaps advise you on how to deal with them per se. Um, okay, that sounds uh, that sounds useful. Good. Um, but yes, uh, anything like that that you can think of, um, bring along. But uh, unless you have any other questions, um, we will the still have time to talk. It will take us a few days. If you think of anything, we will have time to discuss. No, I think that's I think that's everything for now. Um, the ball is in how many days? Um, the Feywild is tricky. It will take us a few days to travel to the region, her area of the Feywild. And I believe that we should be arriving in plenty of time. Um, to perhaps, I would say, do not dawdle for more than a day or so here in, in Evening Star at best. Right. The sooner we leave, the better. Um, how about I take care of what I need tomorrow and we leave tomorrow in the evening? Yes, that would, uh, I think that that will be pushing it to its limits, but that would suffice. Uh, I think at that, I think I was, I think Tarko was standing up that whole time while Willow Song mm -hmm. was sitting down. Mm -hmm. Um, so he'll just walk over and he'll, because he was, he probably kept some distance. He'll reach his hand mm -hmm. out like almost like a, just like a yeah, handshake. handshake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, let me think for a minute here. Like it's very hard. Um, for the Willow song, since the kind of like revelation of her true origins and like Tarkle's anger, like every time you see her, just like this very placid, emotionless expression. Like she tries to like not give anything away. Um, make an insight check for me though, because sure. there's a flash of something um, as you sort of extend this handshake. Uh, 19 total. 19 total. I don't think she's intentionally trying to like put on an act here. Um, it's not that you've like, you get the sense of like this, there's this deep regret, but it's not like an anger or it's not, you know, uh, frustration at your behalf. And she does try and sort of like not let it show but there's this like sadness, like, you know, mm -hmm. like she kind of realizes that this gesture means that like, there has definitely been this like break of something that was important to her, but she takes, she takes your hand and sort of like gently shakes it um, and says, well, then let us see this done so that we can move on with everything. Um, and right. then she almost goes to say something else and then doesn't. Mm. I think if I, if I pick up on that, I would, I think Tarko would just, Right. I will, I will see you uh, tomorrow. Yes, we will leave uh, just, before, uh, just before sunset, if we can. Um... All right. <laughs> Tarkle awkwardly, whatever, jumps off the, the side yeah, of the just, wall. Like, leaves no, I mean, like, she, she just sits there, like, waiting, and then, like, yeah, you have that awkward kind of, like, right, well, I uh, guess I'll, um, yep, yeah, okay, yeah. and then you go, exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. It's yeah. that awkward, awkward, like, oh, great. I don't uh, want to feel bad for her, Mark. All right, I, she did the bad thing. I don't need to feel bad for her, okay? Did she do? I mean, well, I don't know. Did, well, well, anyway, um, I'm going <laughs> to leave that, we'll let that one hang. Um, yeah, this is, so this is a really good chance. Like if you have like, yeah, like you want to go speak to Holder and get like knockout chloroform or like you want to go and get like gadgets made yeah. or something like that. Uh, this is like the perfect time to do it. Like, and, and just like out of game, this is very much James Bond, True Lies, okay. Spy Heist, Ocean's Eleven, you know, we're not, you know, we're going to play it pretty loosey and goosey with some of the D and D rules. But yeah, this is like, if you want to kind of, the other thing I would say as well, this is a bit of an improv thing, but it's a mechanic I really like in other role-playing games. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you, uh, let's say, what's your intelligence modifier? Uh, my intelligence modifier is zero. Okay. In that case, we'll say two. I'm going to give you two flashbacks, basically. Ooh. And this is like, when you're doing the heist, if you can't think of anything now, like this is an opportunity now for you to be like, I want to get like some knockout drugs. I want to get a grapple hook or whatever. Yeah. But if you're during the heist, you think of something that you're like, oh my God, it'd be perfect if I had this. Yeah. You can cash in one of those two points. Um, and basically be like, you know, remember oh, when I did this? Yeah. That's it's like the actually, okay. but what we didn't know is I also got clunk to make me a special thing that, that does feels a cool thing. so hollywood i love that yeah, yeah exactly cool. right like that's that's kind of building into the whole heist mechanic thing and it, it will have to be limited like the more you want that thing if you're like i want a magic gun that like instantly <laughs> knocks somebody out i'll be like 
well, you can have that, but there'll be probably some sort of like setback or flaw or like complication to using it or something like that. So the more you ask for in a flashback, the more chance that it will have either a ch chance to break or fail or do something that was unexpected. Um, whereas the simpler you keep something like if you just want a piece of rope, I'm going to be like, yeah, you have a piece of rope. That's fine. Um, okay, but yeah, okay. like any kind of standard like D and D equipment, like you want to bring some rope with you, no problem. You can yes. just yeah, just, we you have that stuff, right? Any standard equipment you have access to, and we'll say that you know you don't have to worry about buying it or you know carrying it with you or anything like that. We're gonna we're not gonna worry about stuff like that. But anything like special, like anything customized or unique, um, this is uh, think about that. Take okay. Now. Okay. Um, um, you will get a disguise kit, uh, which will have, be a special kind of version disguise kit. Uh, that's going to have three uses. Um, you can choose, like, when you first put on the disguise, if you roll really low and you're like, no, I want to have a higher disguise than that, a better disguise than that, you can choose to use another uh, use of the of the kit. And then you can always save one or you can use them all to get the best possible result. It's kind of like a gamble, right? Like, okay. you know, how far do you want to push it? Like, oh, I got like a 20 disguise, but I could get a 28. Oh, do I want to use another like charge to try and get higher and stuff like that? So okay, okay. kind of like gamble on how good your disguise is. But if you have any charges of your disguise kit left, um, if you need to like redo it, do a new disguise at the, at the ball, like suddenly you're like, I'm going to be a guard and then change everything you can use that disguise kit to try and do that then. Wow, okay. And we, how many charges am I starting out with my disguise kit? Three. Three, three charges. charges on your okay. disguise kit. So three three disguise kit uses and two flashbacks. We'll okay, now, so the disguise kit lets me disguise, but what if I were to, like, mug a guard and take all this stuff? Do I still have to use the disguise kit to, like... So what I would say is um, if you can find, like... Because the tricky thing is going to be, like, you don't know if there's going to be many half elves or humans mm. or elf guards, right? So if you find it like a human or a half elf or an elf guard, you can just take their stuff. And I'd say that you, that would allow you to just use a deception check to do like a, a you know, I'm going to pose as a guard. Okay. If you use the disguise kit to make it better, that's going to give you a proper disguise, right? Like, and that will actually like give you like a, a, a bonus basically. Gotcha. Um, if you have, if the guards are all, I don't know, some other creature, um, you you might have to use the disguise kit to try and make yourself look like one. Or you yeah. might not even be able to look like a guard, right? Like you don't you don't know what the you know, if they're all giants, the guards are all ice giants or something, you're gonna be like, Well, I can't possibly pose as one of those. Yes, yeah. Um okay. so yeah, you're gonna oh, have this to this is cool. I like this here. a lot. Cool. Um, I wanted okay. to do something that felt like a cool Tarkle mission, right? Yes. Like, not just like, I want everybody's kind of like little flashback to be very tailored to the kind of character that they have. So I love that. Okay. So then I guess, so do we want to go through like the next day I go to Hulda, Hulda and start? Yeah. I mean, we can, we can we... role play. Or you, if, if you have an idea of something you want, like we can just figure out what, um, uh, <laughs> we can figure out what the uh, what that looks like and how it works and stuff. So. Okay. Um. I mean, I think I was just I. My first thought was like, okay, I know she's got lots of potions and mushrooms, and you know mm -hmm. she likes her drugs, so or their drugs yeah. rather. And I wanted just something that would quickly inebriate someone. So are we talking like make somebody look like they're really really drunk, make them sick, like knock them out unconscious? Like what are we what are we talking here? I think I'd want them. I guess my initial thought was I wanted them to hallucinate, but maybe that's not <laughs> this. Like, just basically just get them high on the spot yeah. uh, so that they're very happy and just very carefree is what I was thinking. OK, so kind of make them, yeah, like hallucinate and sort of be be inebriated and like out of you know out of commission but yeah. not necessarily unconscious yeah uh, i feel like unconscious cool. you know you just grab some smelling salts they're gonna wake up but if you're like high that takes time that's in your system yeah and also like it, it's you know it's not suspicious like yes. you know the, the other guards might be like oh they've gotten into the you know the booze or they've gotten into like they've they've taken a moment to like take something they shouldn't have mm -hmm. or you know it, it kind of makes it less suspicious than like why are they suddenly just asleep on you know when they should be patrolling yeah um cool all right well let me have a let me have a look here i'm gonna kind of look through i just want to find something that's going to be like a good sort of um like DC, like how many uses and stuff like that. Okay. Because uh, we've got a few like potions and things like that. Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll go with this. Um, so Holder, Holder, we're not going to role play the whole thing out, but Holder yeah. will provide you with 
Um, roll a d4 for me because okay. holders like you know holder would put some time into this, but they've only got a day, so I'm gonna see like how many doses. Of I roll thing. a three. Come on. Okay. Sad about that. Three. Yeah. So what they can provide for you is a dose of. Oh, now this is interesting. Um, so can you roll another d4 for me okay i'm gonna see how this how this drug is administered this is a four so i don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing but it's uh, a okay four. okay so holder will and I'll, I'll, actually i'm gonna change my mind a slightly role play. oh well mr tarka what i've got here oh I've, i think i've got just the thing but you should be quite careful with it um now i didn't have many of my supplies but oh this thing's got a real kick to it right it just Oh, you know, it sends me on all my visions and I get to speak with the, the spirits of the land and the earth. And, oh, you see some wonderful things, but you should be careful. And he hands you or they hand you um, sort of like a little glass um, like vial, but it's stoppered and it's coated in like a thick wax. You can't actually see the liquid inside it. Okay. And the, 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 the sort of cap of it um, is sealed. Um, now, I should warn you, uh, this is on contact so as soon as this touch touches skin or a part of your your body, your hand or your neck or your face or anything like that, go straight into the system. Okay, um, it's it's pretty potent. It lasts about it lasts a few hours, maybe it varies one to three hours. Um, but it's pretty. It's got a bit of a kick. But um, once once it's opened, it's three doses. And if you get any on your skin or anything like that, it will it will it will affect you. So you should be very careful with it. That sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. Thank you. Cool. And we'll call it, uh, we'll call it, what should we call it? Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, God, like this is where I'm like, I'm really bad at like coming up with names. We'll call it like um, uh, Star Lily, uh, you know, Star Lily something. Star Lily. Star Lily drops? Star Lily. Star Lily drops. I like drops. Okay. Star Lily drops. Yeah, Star Lily. So you have three doses of star lily drops and this is basically a contact poison cool um dc 16 constitution saving through it counts as a poison so any creatures that are like you know resistant or hardy against poison they're gonna have an easier time of resisting it got it um if they fail the saving throw for 1d3 hours they're basically incapacitated but still conscious they're yeah they're left okay. in like dreamland basically. cool nice um so yeah, and it makes them basically really, really docile, very unaware of their surroundings. Um, you know, they're still conscious. They can probably still converse, but they we very, very chilled out and very sort of spaced, uh, spacey. Um, but yeah, three doses of that. Um, one dose uh, is is enough to affect one creature, basically. Cool. Um, or like put onto like the tip of a bolt you know a crossbow bolt or onto the you know like you know one one thing basically one yep. dose is one use of it um so yeah yeah so you can have that you can have some star lily drops sweet star lily drops uh i guess the other thing i was thinking of i kind of made it up but i i think i've heard aaron like playing with fireworks essentially some sort of explosions come yeah, from where aaron yeah. is <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely i think that makes sense like maybe him and his like friends in the town sometimes because i think you've got like the gnome tinker that came to work in evening star as well mm -hmm. and i think that they would have things like little bits of like black powder and fireworks and like odd, like alchemical things that holder probably wouldn't have but like a tinker would um and they've probably like known how to you know steal a few or got hold of a couple of like firecracker bombs and things like that nothing that's going to cause like dramatic explosions yeah on its own but I think that you as Tarka would know that like, depending on where this would placed, it could either uh, cause a lot of like, you know, it could set off, you know, if you put it in a, you know, a barrel of oil, that would probably cause quite a, a different, you know, scenario to mm -hmm. if you put it, you know, just on its own. Um, so yeah, we'll say that you can get uh, just one, I think though, like one okay. sort of like package of sort of firework explosives. Um, which uh, on their own will create a loud noise and light and sparks and things like that. Um, but they would ignite any flammable substances. Okay. Probably, yeah, or buy. Sweet. Sure. Cool. All right. So you can have both of those. Um, and then I think that that would probably be the whole day, like, you know, getting Holder to make you the Star Lady drops and then going and speaking to Aaron, who kind of provides you with this 
uh you know wrapped up it's probably like wrapped up in like um like paper from like his mum's deli and like mm. wrapped up with string so it looks like a package of like sandwiches or something but it's actually like a bunch of like these uh, nice. wrapped uh fireworks and uh sort of metal canisters with like little bombs and gunpowders and stuff in it um but yeah and then uh by the time you've done all of that it is nearing sundown the next day um so yes yeah. i'll uh i guess i mean I assume Will Song and I were just going to meet at the town en- town entrance. Yeah, I think the, o- the only th- other thing I would do before leaving, since I'm, I'm obviously going to be gone for a bit, is I would just inform Dusk mm-hmm. and let Dusk tell the crew essentially, like, "Hey, I'm I just got to step away somewhere. Willow Song might have found the solution, uh, but it's something uh, we have to do alone." D- Dusk will say, like, um, Dusk out of everybody as well. He'll kind of like look at you and say, like, "Of course, Master Circle. Of course, yes, I understand." Uh, um, I do not know the exact nature of what you and uh, Lady Willisong are up to, but if it's the two of you, I can pick to the sort of skill set it might require, uh, something that I'm a bit familiar with myself. Um, I will inform Lady Agnes and the others. Uh, I believe Magister Azar is still away, and who knows what Mr. Clive is doing, but I will <laughs> at least, I will be able to inform your sister at least uh, immediately, and the others when they return. Thank you, Dusk. And, then... course, and good luck, sir. Good luck. Uh, and uh, yeah, he will watch you go. And then yeah, on the on the very outskirts of town, uh, with a very simple sort of like travelers pack and and sort of travelers wear, uh, Willow Song is just waiting. He's just sat on like a, like a tree stump or something just outside the city gates, um, just sort of waiting for you. Uh, I think I'll just walk up and. You have everything you need. I I believe so. Everything I could think of in a day's notice. Um, I'm sorry, we're walking? it's not much time. Uh, yeah. Yes, we will be walking into the Kingswood, uh, where there is a fey, a crossing into the Feywild, and then when we arrive in the Feywild, we will make our way to Midnight Rhine. All right. It will be about sort of three days of travel to to reach there, and, but the area of the Feywild we'll be traveling through is quite safe. Um, we should be fine for easy to find food and water and the like. We should not need to worry too much. Okay. I uh, I let the others know that we'll be going so they won't be looking for us. Uh, they will be worried for your safety, I'm sure. Uh, but I will make sure that you return to them at least. I don't know how to handle this, Mark. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to. <laughs> Listen, stay. man, like this is that org. It's that, it's the D&D DM meme of like, oh no, I have to role play like a romantic connection with like one of my players. No, no, I, I, can, my friend. I can handle, I, it's more that I can't handle like being angry at her for literally a full <laughs> season. And then she's just being like a, a polite person now. Super reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. reasonable is the I mean, exact word. not unreasonable, but Taco was understandable understandably annoyed listen her, but like, tricking she, me yeah. tricking tricking tarkle into Absolutely. a vague a pact is not reasonable at all it is not <laughs> reasonable <laughs> that's listen man like i just get it's weird for me because like i'm having to play it from willow song's perspective which is quite yes. different to tarkle so it's just like okay all right well, we'll carry on anyway um but yeah it is uh you you travel through and, and the journey into the kingswood is maybe half a day um by the time the moon is like fully overhead and you know sunrise is beginning to come up uh she's led you to what to you just looks like another woodland trail um but it, you kind of quickly pick up on a feeling like the mm. area being unnatural or like the skin the hairs on the back of your neck go up you get a strange kind of sensation the temperature is wrong here little things like that and then as you are walking down this trail you notice that the colors become more vibrant that um the birds sound different here um and then before you know it you round a corner and instead you come out into uh the Feywild, which you have seen before you traveled to once uh, when you were summoned there to assist clive um, and it is a place of uh, very, it, it's like a fantasy forest with the saturation turned up to a hundred. <laughs> um, like the bloom is on really high um, and it's just very alien. Like the, you know, the colors are wrong. Like the grass is blue and purple and, you know, the sky goes from, you know, green to, you know, yellow and it che- like, and then you move like a couple of miles down the road and suddenly it's blue sky again. And you walk through fields of flowers that are as tall as houses. And, you know, it's this very different and alien landscape. Um, 
But as you are traveling, one of the things you do notice is uh, Willow Song seems happier in a sense. Like um, she stops and picks up, she picks like flowers and she like goes and sort of like gathers water at springs and actually seems to feel quite at home and relaxed here um, and seems very comfortable around the natural world. Um, and you have to like rest and stop. And there's a couple of times where like you guys have to make camp in the, in the Feywild, um, sitting on like the edges of like these beautiful kind of crystal lakes um, with strange trees growing out of them and things like that, or, you know, tucked into a, a small valley uh, of these giant, enormous house flowers and things like that. You see, you know, you watch as packs of enormous giant bees go flying past like a herd of buffalo, but they're massive bees. Wow. In there. Um, just very strange and very bizarre. But I think on one of those occasions when you're maybe like camping for the night and, you know, you've gone and foraged some food and things like that. Um, well, someone might probably turn around and just sort of uh, ask you a question, sort of a little bit out of nowhere. Um, and she'll probably just say, what do you think of us doing this? Stealing from this queen? Well, I wouldn't say it's the most noble thing I've done, um, but I also wouldn't say it's the least noble thing I've done. You said that these are things she has stolen from others. Yes. Yes. Is it more, is it worse to steal from a thief? Is that more wrong somehow, or is it more right? I don't know. It's, I've seen you fight and kill others and i've seen others trying to kill you uh, i'm just this whole thing this whole event everything that's happened so far it's so confusing i've lived a very long time tarkle hundreds of years i've seen humans orcs dwarves elves i've seen them kill and steal from each other for centuries and every side seems to think they're the ones in the right. A group of adventurers walk into a cave full of goblins, murder them, take everything, and consider themselves heroes. But those goblins raid a merchant wagon because they're starving, or they need weapons to protect themselves, and somehow they're the monsters. I don't mean to... I'm not... This isn't... <laughs> I'm not trying to lay this at your feet or, or look for answers. It's just... I just don't really know what to believe anymore. I've spent centuries pretending to be different people and creatures, listening and watching to them go about their lives. Just everything seems so hypocritical. Dragons are no better. Mother's raging at Cormir for killing her parents centuries longer ago. And, but the humans who did that are long since dead, and now she's killing their families and descendants for it. And from now on, the people of Cormir will see every green dragon or red or blue or white or black as just another monster leaving our young to become the next hateful creatures in the cycle. And she's just, yeah, it's like, this is like obviously unloading just this, yeah. uh, this you know, venting at you as, you've, as you're on this journey. Um, so and she goes quiet a little bit, like mm -hmm. seemingly embarrassed that she's sort of had this, uh, you know, eruption of emotion. Mm -hmm. So do you know what you believe? Or is everyone a monster? And it's a matter of perspective? I don't know. That's the thing. I, I never used to question any of this. I just did what I was told. I was made to think that as a dragon, I was somehow better than creatures like humans and elves. So lying to them, deceiving them, killing them, none of it mattered. That's what mother used to tell me. That's what my brothers and sisters all believed. And I was just sort of going through the motions, I suppose. I never enjoyed lying to people. I never liked killing like some other dragons do. I just liked being in the woods, being around creatures and quiet places. But it was my duty. I was expected to do it. So I did. Well, Seeing you... Sorry, please. No, no, go ahead. It's just... You, your sister, I mean, even Agnes, and please forgive me, I do not mean to insult the girl or anything, but even in her, I see similar hypocrisies. I know that she loves people and that she does genuinely believe that 
things like nobility are a social idea that perhaps is no longer as useful as it once was but she still clings on to elements of it she still expects people to listen to her sometimes same with azara and well perhaps not clive i think he perhaps is one of the most simple but yet honest and direct creatures i have ever met i think you have the luxury of having hundreds of years on your side whereas my sister and i well, we have this short life that we've lived so far. And you are now coming to this realization. You used to never question, as you said. Mm. So it is both a luxury and a burden that you are becoming aware of, well, as you put it, how hypocritical beings really are. Mm. I don't know if I have an answer, because yes, I've killed mm. and I've stolen, and I've always thought it was for the greater good, but... You're probably right. It's probably just for my greater good. But isn't that all we can do? Is worry about the things that we can touch, the people that we can know? Yes. Yes, there is an element of that. But how do you know? When you, when you have to trick someone to steal a blade or to uh, infiltrate a cult, or to protect those you care about, how, how do you know that that's the right thing to do? Well, I don't think you ever really can because you'll often look back and the results will deter you from what you originally thought. You can believe that something is right in the moment, you can do it and it can be the wrong thing. And then all you can do is try to do the next right thing. I suppose that is where your point about my long life is very true. For you, the next right thing is immediate. It may be a day or a few hours later. For me, it could be a decade or a hundred. But I think you're right. And I'm not expecting answers. <laughs> I just, I've never really had anyone to talk to about these things. I would sometimes voice these fears to the trees, to the beasts of the Kingswood, when I would walk amongst them. But I've never had somebody who could just talk about it, just think about it. Other dragons just, they think they know everything. There is an arrogance to a dragon, more, some more than others. The golds and the reds are particularly arrogant, but all of us used to, well, all of them believe them to be superior. At least the ones I know do. And so you don't really get this humility that you possess. I think that's the best word for it. You're aware of your flaws, of your inadequacies, and that helps you see this path that I couldn't before, I think. Even this stealing this blade, it, to me, I would never have questioned it. It would have simply been a means to an end. But knowing this is something you desire, something I've promised to you, I've pushed through, but I do still have my doubts. If, if you think that this is not the right way, are, are you certain that we cannot ask? I think that if we were to ask, you would be put into a position far worse than the one you are in. You may, you may, sus you may suspect me and you may doubt my intentions with this bond between us. I can assure you that the Queen of Air and Darkness would make you do terrible things in her place, in her service. And she will not just give you the blade if you ask mm. for it. She will expect a bargain. I think that this is our only option. And if that means that it is not right, I still feel that it is the path we must walk. If you truly wish to be rid of this bond between us. And, and I do. I want, I want you to have that choice. Not to have it forced upon you. Mm. 
So I think that unfortunately we must. Well, we'll give it back someday, won't we? Mm. I think that I think that to be a suitable compromise, at least. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll let you rest. Um, thank you for talking with me. It was, it was nice. I talking. Understand. And she will get up and she'll wander off. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't tend to rest like you need to. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll, she'll sort of go off and just be like, I'll, I'll keep watch. And she moves off into the tree line or something. Uh, Sweet. And you sort of in a quiet moment. Uh, but yeah, cool. That was right. a good one, Mark. Pretty good. Okay. I feel I, I, I stop. I feel like, I feel like I'm just on strings and you're just like, yes. Is the, are these the strings or are the strings being cut now? Who knows? Oh, true. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Oh. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, you travel for another day or so, and then uh, Willisong will tell you that you are approaching the border. And you begin to notice, in fact, before Willisong says anything, you notice the weather begins to turn colder. Uh, there is less light. Things look more dark. Um, the terrain becomes less uh, verdant and more rocky and sort of uh, un inhospitable um as you progress further uh, and you think you're probably heading in a northern direction as best as you can tell you don't mm. really have as, as orientation here but you think that that would roughly be you, that would be the direction you assign to it um and yeah and then a few hours later well as someone say like we are approaching the border of midnight rhyme the queen of air and darkness's realm um we should apply your disguise before we go further if if we encounter any any of her uh, men, or her soldiers, or her forces, or courtiers. So we should make sure that we are both um, prepared for the for the evening. Uh, there, are, I brought some clothes uh, for you as well as the 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 disguise kit. And she'll uh, conjure. She kind of like summons a magical chest. She sort of like casts a spell, and a chest appears. Um, and inside that chest, she opens it up. There is basically like evening wear for the both of you. Uh, there is this disguise kit, which is like a leather satchel bag uh, that has things like makeup, dark hair dyes, uh, like fake hair, prosthetics, glues, um, all of this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, and then she'll provide that. So this is uh, the opportunity uh, for you to apply your disguise, sir. So this is, the way it works is it's a charisma deception check okay. um, to do. Um, you have proficiency because you are an assassin rogue, so you already have proficiency. So it is, uh, you know, you don't, you, you basically just make this as a deception check, uh, which I think you have proficiency in, right? Uh, I On my character sheet, it doesn't look like I do. Okay. In that case, you can apply your proficiency to it. So it will okay. be your charisma modifier and your proficiency bonus. Okay. Um, and my proficiency bonus should be, oh, my plus five. Okay, cool. Gotcha. I'll just, I'll just double check, uh, but I'm pretty sure that is correct. Okay. So I rolled. So it should be. Uh, plus five for your proficiency and plus four for your charisma. Right. So this is a plus nine to the roll. So I rolled a nine, so I got 18. Okay, so that is one use of the disguise kit. And sort okay. of following the, you know, uh, uh, Willowsong has written out like a description of this Artemis in Trary. Mm -hmm. um, he's a human, so you'll have to hide your ear tips, which is fine. There's like a prosthetic to kind of like smooth them over. Um, he's a little bit older than you, apparently. He's He would have been in around about his 40s or 50s, or like mid 40s. Um, and apparently uh, an encounter with a shade uh, gave him like a very slight gray pallor to his skin. Okay. So it's kind of like a, you're kind of like putting like a, a makeup, a, like a gray makeup into your skin as well. Um, and then like a rough description, like his hair is very similar to yours. He has like a slightly different nose and things like that. But it, it's all written down for you to follow. But uh, that will give you, so uh, that's one use of your kit. Um, but that gives you a disguise score of 18. Okay. Now your disguise score is going to be what I'm checking things like perception and insight checks against when you are moving around the party. So you're saying I should have um, rolled a lot better. <laughs> well, well, this is this is where the gamble and the bit of gameplay comes in uh -huh. because as you go about things, let's say that you are, you know, if you're in this heist, if you fail to like bluff a guard, I'm not just going to have the immediate heist completely fail because of that one check, right? Yeah. So the disguise score is going to be how we track how incognito you are. And if you fail a skill check, you're going to lose points off of your score. Mm. So if you have an 18 and you fail to like, I don't know, bluff another guest or like you raise suspicion in some way, you might lose 
three or four points off your disguise score. And the lower the score gets, the easier it is for you to get recognized. And then when that disguise score reaches zero, you've been discovered. Like okay. they, they know what's going on. They know who you are and that you're up to no good, basically. So this is a chance. You've got two more uses on the disguise kit. You can risk another one to see if you roll better than a nine. But if you roll worse than a nine, it will override your current. Score. Yeah, I'm going to, for now, 18 is kind of healthy as far as the total score goes. So I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, the sky score, 18, two uses, two kit uses remaining. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous now, Mark. I don't know. No, I'm not going to roll. I'm not going to roll. I'm, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. You sure? So yes. the, gambler's, the gambler's decision of like, oh, but a nine is, is it's under average for it a is. D20. I know. Like, but like at know. the same time, if I feel like I'm faulting, I can technically find a corner and try to disguise myself anew you can you'll need to find a corner where you know you'll find it find a, a quiet place where you're not going to be disturbed to mm -hmm. go off and uh you know try and apply a, uh, a disguise i will say that you won't be able to like just you'll have to pick a new per, like a new persona to become like if you try and this is your disguise for this character of artemis and terry once you've left this area you can't try and become them again this oh is now you're stuff. giving me you're giving me mobile game fomo right now that's what you're doing it's like this deal is gonna go away in two minutes if you don't buy it three days like uh, two hours for the, the 4.99 buy your starter pack of gems dude. um yeah so but so you could do that but you'll need to find and this is like have you ever played the hitman games like the, the hitman yes. video games yep. mm -hmm. so like you know you've got to pick up the new like if your disguise is compromised that disguise doesn't work anymore you've got yeah. to find a new disguise and that means a new you know new role of the disguise kit and stuff. no that makes sense all right nope it's fine i'm doing it i'm leaving stick it with it yeah stick. sure stick okay all right you finish getting uh, your disguise on and there's a set of clothes there for you. It's like a black nobleman's sort of evening wear, basically, but very sleek and black and little bits of like leather boots and leather braces to kind of give you that more uh, combat-y vibe. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, uh, uh, there is a dress belt uh, with uh, a holster for Kiss of Silver. There is also a scimitar as well that comes with it. Oh, cool. um, and you and it says on the notes from um, Willow Song that this, this Artemis was basically renowned for fighting with two weapons. Like he was known as like a, a duelist, like a two weapon duelist. Gotcha. Um, and uh, yeah, so you kind of get all the kit on and then you, you, you know, when you're finished, you look over and you see the Willow Song. It, you're not sure, you don't think it's a, it's a disguise and it's not an illusion. Um, but you see her sort of transform into her hybrid uh, draconic form. Um, so this is where she cannot become a real dragon because of the, the binding spell that's been put on her. Um, instead, she's going to basically reveal, you know, as much of her draconic li lineage as she can. So what she looks like now is she has this very sleek pair of draconic horns that come out of her hair that have like a green black hue. Her ears are more frilled and sort of like have like a greenish uh, tint to the tips. Um, her eyes are like the true dragon yellow with the black line. Nice. And then her sort of like neck and upper arms, um, you know, the her thigh have that sort of like scaled, like hardened texture. Um, and uh, she has a tail, a draconic tail coming out of the small of her back. And she's kind of wearing a very spy-esque low-backed green dress, the kind of thing to like let the tail out and stuff like that. Very, very uh, Ocean's Eleven kind of high Nice. You know evening again uh also if you've ever have you played um have you played mass effect as well do you know mass effect no i haven't played mass effect okay. I, know, I know the series there's, I haven't played there's it. a heist in it which is very similar to like how i face this on and there's like very similar kind of outfits and stuff okay um but yeah so she she you know she's take, taken on this like more natural form but you can see that like she's kind of awkward about it like she doesn't really she kind of like if she sees you kind of like looking at like the tail and stuff like that she kind of turns away like almost like she's a bit embarrassed Aww. um and then she will lead you on uh you know and you're not sure if you're reading that right you're not sure if it's actual embarrassment or something else going on there but she definitely is like turning away and sort of like um kind of is a bit more sort of like right let us step forward uh, and move on i think that there should be a pass just up ahead which leads us into uh the queen's realm truly uh is everything done do you have your disguise uh, all set i've been literally thinking if i'm gonna change my voice for this disguise <laughs> i was gonna answer her just like yeah it's done i think i'm she, just gonna yeah i am um, i have no notes on how miss mr Intrary spoke <laughs> Um, but it will certainly aid in your uh, efforts to avoid your real identity being discovered, I think. Even if uh, people uh, can see through the disguise, it should at least keep people from knowing who you really are. Um, 
she does kind of make a face at the voice like yeah, mm, i'm sure that's not not a fan not, not um, the best voice ever well it's more that she's just like mm, i prefer the old one uh -huh. um but she'll sort of uh be like very well and she uh snap her fingers the chest vanishes as well and she'll just sort of like uh sort of like gesture for you to to follow on uh with her um <clears throat> uh ah some other things that she would have mentioned on the way here which okay. i'm really just getting through in my notes so a couple more things and i appreciate this is a lot of like knowledge ahead of gameplay but this is because i want you to have the most information you know part of a heist is being fully informed right yeah knowing what you're going into um and this being the Feywild, there's a couple of other things that she would tell you about um and she kind of remarks this uh on the idea that the Feywild and the archfey in particular are heavily bound by narrative and story and the you know the rules of storytelling and the rules of like character types and things like that and she will tell you that the queen's nature um she cannot really change it like she has to act a certain way um, and that means that she's predictable in certain elements, right? And so she will tell you that the queen's nature, uh, the queen of air and darkness is first and foremost a queen. Treating her as such will please her. However, she admires survivors and those who show cunning more than pretty words and courage. Um, so she is a, she, the, the queen of air and darkness is somebody who admires those who can survive by any means, especially those who do so in, via cunning rather than just brute sort of like, you know, bolstered courage or like, you know, uh, pretty flattering words and things like that. Uh, um, she will also tell you that being royalty, if she gives you her word, she is bound to follow it. Uh, this is something that many archfey are, uh, their word is very important. If they, if they give you their words, they are bound to, to, to honor it. Um, this is especially true for the Archfey and Senior Fey. And then finally, she's cruel, but not malicious. She is not always honest, but she considers herself fair. Um, so those are on the actual queen herself. And then the last thing she will tell you, and this is another very big one, which I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, in the Feywild, in the domain of an Archfey, the Archfey's presence can instill rules. Um, to all creatures within the domain. Uh, they, well, someone will tell you that she doesn't know what the consequences of breaking these rules will be, but there will be a consequence um, and it is magically enforced on all creatures. It's not like these are saving throws. These are just rules that every creature within the realm is bound to follow. It's like gravity. Yes, kind of like, yeah, basically installing like, installing like a, a, a law of physics, but these are more sort of like... Um, narrative or like you know kind of like the kind of things that you might you know hear about in a, in a fairy tale mm -hmm. and she'll tell you that the queen's rules she had a contact her contact in the palace has told her what the three rules currently uh established are oh okay uh the first is called the rule of honesty when asked a question i shall speak only what i know to be true Oh boy. Uh, well, the song will probably comment. This is an odd one for the deceptive, unseely Fay, but like most things the Queen does, there's probably more to this than would seem obvious. Um, and I'll repeat these. Like anytime you want a reminder on these rules, I'll happily tell you. But that one is the rule of honesty. When asked a question, I shall speak only what I know to be true. Okay. Um, and very much like a fairy tale, if you can think of ways around these rules, uh -huh. that, that could work, right? Yeah. Like if you, if you, you know, it's very much a test of cunning. Um, the second rule is called the rule of exchange. When you accept what is offered, you accept the price. Once a price is agreed upon, it cannot be changed. Um, and Willison will tell you, be careful with this one. Trade to the Fae can mean many things. And this rule would bind you to repay whatever is asked for, regardless of what is on offer or how it was traded. Um, okay. The last one, uh, and again, if you, got, you can ask for a reminder or questions, the last one is called the rule of consent. A being cannot use magic to force another to act against their own safety. Um, and Willison will say, I don't know if this rule showcases the queen's fair or just side, or if it's simply that the unseely prefer their manipulations to be more insidious. Um, okay. Those, those well, I'm glad I didn't bring actual poison then, and I'm just getting someone high, because that's not really putting them in danger, hopefully. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's also like, it's like you that know, that, the rule of consent is more like using like charm effects or like suggestion mm. to be like, 
jump off a bridge or like do what I tell you and stuff like that. Like you could probably still use magic to, you know, get somebody to do something that wasn't going to put them at harm, yeah. but you couldn't do something that was going to eventually cause them like any sort of like uh, trauma or danger or anything like that. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, like a, a poison or a drug probably wouldn't count because it would be a physical alchemical substance that you're like giving to them. You're not using magic to yes. coerce them into doing it. If you tried to be like, drink this poison with a suggestion spell or something like that. Not that Taka has those, but if you tried that, it probably wouldn't work. Okay. But the other thing we'll also is these rules might also protect you from these effects as well. So she, you know, she'll say that you shouldn't, you don't need to worry so much about, you know, a creature using magic to make you do something to cause yourself harm or, you know, risk yourself or anything like mm. that. Um, but there's does say, and likewise the rule of honesty, you might be able to use that to if you ask the right question you know she, you might be able to use that to your own advantage as well um all of the rules all of the rules both apply to you but also apply to everybody else so if you can think of clever ways to use them they could be another tool in your arsenal okay. any questions on any of that no i'm getting it both excited and scared so this is great <laughs> great that's perfect that's exactly where you should be in a DD game all right so moving on uh, as you have those conversations eventually uh, you reach a cold valley uh, that seems to go up. You feel yourself like a, at an incline, and it is getting cold. Um, very similar to, I believe, when you and the, the crew visited Icewind Dale. It is getting icy and windy, and your clothing that you are wearing is not really suited for this environment. Um, but eventually, uh, you come across a very odd sight as the valley sort of leans up and you see an overpart like an overlook sorry an overhang looking onto this just mist clouded um mountain range basically uh with these impossibly tall peaks all amongst the clouds and heavy drifts of snow but around on this overlook you see a dozen or so well-dressed uh goblins and hobgoblins in tailcoats um all stood around in tailcoats and top hats um, and sort of like riding trousers and polished black leather boots. Um, and they are stood around a series of very posh looking carriages, like very elegant looking black and silver carriages, which are pulled by a warg, uh, a kind of goblin wolf horse thing, um, which is wearing a, a comparison of uh, the same black and silver with the emblem of a crown over a mountain peak. Um, and the hobgoblins and goblins, they all have blue skin uh, like blue gray kind of like colored skin um, and they're sort of stood around completely unbothered by the cold they've just got like their hands in their pockets you know they're maybe like they appear to be like smoking like little sort of like rolled up pieces of tobacco or like playing cards with each other on like a little upturned crate um, but when they see you and Willison coming uh, one of them will sort of like uh, take uh, this one of these little cigarettes out, kind of stamp it out and make their way over to you. And she, you see it's actually a female hobgoblin, but wearing sort of the very, you know, what you would probably call a masculine tailcoat, like a butler's kind of like, you know, like the queen might have or something like that, kind of like with a big old top hat. Um, and she'll say, ah, uh, good day, honored guests. Are you here for the queen's ball? Yes. Uh, and would you be so kind as to present me your invitation, please? I'll look over to Willow, yeah. Uh, Willow will uh, hand it over um, and the hobgoblin will take it and she reads it and she just closes it up and then she bows uh, very low and very deeply Ah, a pleasure to meet you Lady Willow's song the court stories of your draconic beauty really do you no justice as resplendent as a viridian forest caressed by twilight and she'll take Willow's song's hand and sort of like kiss the top of it and then she will turn to you and sir the infamous Artemis and Trary. True pleasure to meet such a legend from the mortal world. And then she'll she'll put her hand out. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake her hand. All right, you shake her hand and you see the, the hobgoblin sort of half smile. Uh, and then when she finished shaking it, she goes, just a gold for the handshake, sir. Um, and a gold coin appears in her hand. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And, and and she'll look at you and she'll say, and I'll, if if you would be so kind to allow me to offer you some advice at no price or favor, uh, be careful here. Many of the queen's courtiers and guests will be far more unreasonable with such an opportunity. Um, and she'll pocket the gold coin. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, and yeah, do you, do you say anything? Like Willow, someone kind of look I at you a little bit. I say absolutely nothing. <laughs> no way. Uh, the hobgoblin will then just uh, like nod her head and incline and say, my name is Scartha, 
I shall be your footman for the evening. I will take you up to the palace entrance, safe and well, and I ask for no price or favour in return. Now, please, your carriage awaits. Um, and she will gesture over to one of these beautiful, elegant carriages. Um, yeah. Okay, I just needed to write that down. Okay, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get in the carriage for sure with, with Willow Song, obviously. <laughs> I was I, I put that in there. I was just that's like, such a good reminder. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. That was so good, Mark. Oh. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't come across as mean. No, no, that's great. As mean. It's like, hey, just so you just... know, this is the kind of shit that yes. is going to be going on. Uh huh. Right? You know, I've had too many friends who have done a lot of fey, fey nonsense, and I'm like, man, I've learned a lot about it. Um, <laughs> Scartha will lead you to the carriage. She opens the door for you both, um, and inside the carriages are decorated with soft plush gray leather. Um, you, it's magically warm. As soon as you step into the carriage, the cold, it, it's comfortable, as if you were in, you know, evening star, basically. Um, the doors have glass windows, um, and then a small sliding panel um, sort of uh, connects to where Scartha sit, uh, sits. Uh, I want to allow you to communicate if you wish, or you can close it. Um, it's very quiet in the carriage. When you're inside, you kind of, um, you the the little panel opens and Scartha will kind of peer in from the sort of rider's seat. Uh, we're about to head off, honored guests. Uh, if you need to speak with me, knock on the panel three times and I shall answer. Uh, I would advise you not to open the door or leave the carriage until we arrive at our destination. The mountain pass is uh, sheer and narrow and the fall is quite unpleasant. Um, thank you uh, and she just nods uh, it's also <laughs> I'm going to be constantly like thinking to myself like can I twist this can I get it yeah. <laughs> or, or, or like oh god did Shady just do something where like I've agreed to it now and I've got to do that um, but she will nod uh, and uh, you hear the, the thing slide shut um, and then yeah you sense motion and looking out the window you begin to see this uh, icy mountain range there is a beauty to this place but it's that kind of like you know looking at like Mount Everest and you're like wow mm. that's beautiful but also it's terrifying at the same time yeah um, and it just shows you like the raw kind of power of of the of the of nature right um and yeah the carriage uh trundles along for a little bit uh i mean do you want to do anything while you're in the carriage um or i'm i'm still i'm still trying to feel my get my footing in this place man this is this is tough uh it's a lot of stuff to go on i i was trying to think if there was anything i could ask scartha that would be of use but honestly mm -hmm. i feel like I feel like that's not her. I feel like it's not her role. I don't know. I mean, you could ask. Like, there's definitely no harm in asking. Like, yeah, but like the questions that I was thinking of asking is like, okay, well, Willow Song has already confirmed that Epilogue is here. That like, mm -hmm. and she, uh, Willow Song's already given a bunch of info. So I don't think I, because I haven't seen inside yet, I don't think I have the right information to ask appropriate questions anyway. No, I mean, if you want to, this could be a good thing and be like, you know, you could just be like idle, like, oh, you know, I've never been to like, tell me about the castle. Like, what's, is there anything I should go and see? Like, you know, this is, this is definitely a person that you could ask general questions to. Um, they probably won't be able to like, give you like lots of information, but you might be able to glean something okay. if you I wanted to. I think I'll do a triple knock and try to do a casual. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it slides open and you can see Scartha, like one hand on a series of reins will, will look down and say, uh, Mr. Entreri, um, before, if, before we discuss any further, uh, can we simply both agree that no questions or answers will carry a price on this journey? Agreed. Yes. Okay, I would good. like that. that. that and, and you can see she relaxes. Like yeah. as soon as that's agreed, she's just like, ah, now we can speak a bit more casually, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how can I help you? How, what, what can I do for you? Are you enjoying the view? Yeah, this place is uh, breathtaking and imposing. Um, uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, I've never been uh, here or to the castle, and I, I wanted to know, is there any sights to be seen inside? Oh, very much so, sir. Very much so. I mean, you'll, uh, I'm not sure if the whole castle will be available for guests to explore. Uh, the queen does keep uh, various chambers private during these sorts of matters. And there will be guards, uh, you know, around to make sure that guests do not wander too far. Um, normally, that would have been one of my jobs, but I'm a footman today. Um, but uh, yes, uh, I'm, I would personally recommend going and seeing the queen's gallery. Uh, which will be opposite the Great Hall, where most of the party will be taking place. The gallery should be uh, available for guests. Uh, the Queen does love to show off her collection of art uh, uh, when you go there. Um, you could also visit the uh, the Eastern Tower, spectacular views of the mountains all around. 
Um, and actually below the tower, and this is something that many of the, uh, the other other guests might not know to go and check out. We have a beautiful eyrie as well, uh, sometimes used to get rid of the queen's prisoners uh, once she's uh, had her, once she's finished with them. Um, uh, just be careful not to uh, step through the hole in the floor. Mm. That is good advice. Okay. Um... But yes, I, I I hope that you enjoy it. The queen's palace is uh, it's a wonderful, very uh, resplendent place to be, and uh, I many many visitors are, are here for the for the ball. Uh, I, was, I was just going to ask how many people were here, but if it's, I guess it's... Oh, difficult to say, sir. I mean, I've, I've only ferried, I ferried two others uh, up on the journey so far. Uh, there was, uh, who was there? There was the, uh, oh, that frightfully miserable satyr, the musician, uh, one of the performers for the evening, I think, providing some music. Um, can't remember the fellow's name, didn't give it. I was too, too suspicious of me asking some price, I think. Um, oh, and there was a very friendly pair of uh, fiends from the city of Dis in the Nine Hells, a succubi and an incubi, I believe. Uh, friendly, very huh? Friend oh, very friendly, sir. Had to inform them that I was strictly on duty. Um, although if they wished to visit me later, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have uh, minded. But uh, no, I imagine that they'll be far more distracted by the guests. Um, but yes, very, very friendly sort. But yes, there's been all sorts of visitors, people from your world, the mortal world. Um, there's been some other visitors from the various fey courts, uh, from the hells, as I mentioned. I think we may even have a couple of visitors from uh, Elysium or some of the uh, higher planes as well. Very rare to have such guests. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a good evening. Oh, yes, I believe so. Uh, the Queen has just been absolutely delighted about it. It's, uh, it's good to have her in one of her good moods. Um, very much so. She seems to be very excited for the evening. Mm, how, how often does she throw these balls? Oh, very rarely, sir. Once, uh, it's also difficult. I mean, uh, once a year here for us, but I'm not sure how often that is in your world. It can Time can be a little bit different, I think, over here. Um, I think the last time I saw anyone from your realm, they maybe said... Uh, do you do you know what year it is in your world? I <laughs> do you, uh, you you would know. Uh, it's Harkel uh, would know. Shady Arkle does not knows. know. Shady yes, knows. I think it is like fourteen ninety three. I want to say. Okay. I think um, forgotten realms, man. Like I'm working with a calendar. I I yeah. don't know a lot about. Either. <laughs> but I think it's about fourteen ninety three. And Scartha would say like, oh, I think he he mentioned it was something like fourteen eighty something or something like that. So it might have been a decade or more okay. um, in your world. But uh, yes, yeah, very regularly for us. Uh, you know, we we rotate us guards, uh, the goblins and the hobgoblins. Uh, we rotate around. Um, I think the goblins are mainly on uh, support duty, so they'll be in the kitchens along with some of the others and the hags and the formians and like. But uh, the hobgoblins are normally are uh, we're normally the the guards on patrol and the footmen uh, for the for Her Majesty. Right. Well, you know, thanks for at least giving. I know I'll have had one conversation without a price tonight, huh? Ah, uh, yes, des definitely be careful, sir. Definitely be careful. Um, it is, uh, you know, not everybody will be out to try and sort of win one over you on you, especially those who are not familiar with the Fey, with the Fey Wild. Uh, any guests from other planes of existence may not quite realize the rules themselves. Um, perhaps, perhaps you might even be able to win one over on a couple of them. Uh, but definitely with uh, anybody who is from the Queen's realm, be cautious. Uh, you'll lose more than a couple of gold uh, if you uh, make the wrong sort of bargain um, or if you accept a trade without thinking about it. Uh, but yes, it, I, I must say, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. I mean, we've all heard the stories of Artemis and Treri. Uh, I think that quite a few of the guards are excited to know that you'll be stalking the shadows around this evening. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's sort of like definitely sort of a, a bit of a laugh. Uh, she's like, well, I'll leave you to it. Anyway, so unless there's other questions that you have for me. No, it's been it's been a pleasure, Scartha. Oh well, my pleasure. And uh, as you've been such fine company, um, and and she kind of like winks at you and says, "Allow me to make the offer now that if you wish uh, to accept it for no price or favor, I would be glad to escort you from the palace back to the border of Her Majesty's realm once you are done with the party." I would appreciate that. And then the deal is struck, um, and you do feel like something like in the air sort of comes over you like a connection between you and Scartha now. Okay. Um, I will tell you now as shady and as the player and like <laughs> Tarkal would probably be able to fathom this or at least Willow Song will telepathically tell you that this is what's happened. Um, Cause she's kind of like been listening in. Uh, that means 
Scartha is now magically bound to take you from the castle entrance back to the border, like as safely as she can. Okay. So if you needed to, she is like, even if the queen, like you are being chased by all the other guards and the yeah. queen is yelling to get you, if Scartha is like Scartha will have to wait and take you from that entrance back to the back to here, no matter what. Um, even okay. if like her queen orders her to stop, she has to compel. She has, she has to, to finish food. that. Okay. Yes. Ooh, okay. And I was made, nervous about even saying that, that accepting that. I'm like, is that going to bite me in the butt? I mean, it's still oh, good. Oh, I don't know. No, this, so. that, and and so the, the, the reason for that is I want to show you that it can work your favor as mm. well. Like if you can make like, these are like magical bonds that, you know, uh, you know, create this deal. Right. And they have to, they have to follow through on it. Um, the only exception to that is if you were to try and make a bargain that would intentionally cause somebody to heart, like harm themselves. Like okay. you couldn't say, oh, give me that drink. Uh, and in return, or like, I I'll give you this drink and you have to knock yourself out with a club. You couldn't do that because that would break the rule of consent. Gotcha. Um, but because there is no inherent danger in what Scartha has promised you, the deal goes through. Okay. Um, now, if, if she were to become under fire whilst trying to conduct that thing, it doesn't count because when you made the deal, there was no implied danger to it. Gotcha. Basically. Got you. Sick. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, whilst you are in the carriage, uh, we will say that um, uh, Willow Song has cast the spell uh, Rari's telepathic bond, which links you now both telepathically. Um, and as part of the spell, she can also basically she can choose to cut off her senses and use your senses instead. Um, but she means that she's blind and deaf uh, herself while she does that. Okay. Um, wow. But uh, she will just kind of like speak, speak to you in your mind. Can you hear me? Is this is this functional? There's no interference or or sort of magical interruptions. No, nothing. Good. You should be able to respond to me, and we'll be aware uh, that we can both perform this uh, telepathic communication at any time. Um, if you want me to perceive through your senses, tell me. I will need. Uh, it may take me time to find somewhere where I am safe to abandon my own to see through yours temporarily. So you may need to wait moments or perhaps a minute at most uh, while i get out of conversations i may be in or excuse myself to go somewhere private or something of the like um sounds good if you need me or if you have questions or if anything happens that you think i should know please tell me immediately um we'll we will work this out together whatever problems we encounter we will assist each other as best we can when she says if you have any questions tarko like thinks and yeah. he has a question but he's not gonna ask it yet okay yeah uh okay it's yeah it's not, a detect a thought, it's not a detect thought spell, yes so yeah she doesn't know that she's thinking you're thinking that but yeah okay um sure uh yeah well that's the other thing is talk all you know one of the rules uh-huh uh, yeah, yeah absolutely um all right so uh scartha takes you to the front of the queen's palace and you see that the palace is this you know, very traditional medieval castle carved from black ice at the peak of the tallest, coldest mountain in the region. And as you've been like looking out the windows, as you've been going up, you haven't seen a path underneath you. You have just seen sheer drops wow. into like misty cloud mountains, jagged, icy, horrible looking mountain ranges. Um, and when the carriage takes you up it pulls up into a big courtyard you go through like a big arched um, bastion gate you go up to like the front like through into a courtyard where there are various other carriages waiting um there's a giant fountain completely frozen like the water is like mid spray and it's just frozen in place the ground is covered in snow um and it takes you right to the front gate and looking behind you you can see that the pathway that brought you here was just wide enough for the carriage itself. Wow. Um, it, it was maybe sort of like seven, like six, seven feet wide. Um, and it's just a sheer drop, almost like a bridge, uh, like leading up to the castle. Um, but you've not felt any cold. Uh, and as soon as you step out of it, though, Sagartha will come down, open the door, sort of like lower the steps and be like, sir, good lady, uh, and offer you to step out. Um, as soon as you step out, it is immediately freezing mm. cold bitterly cold like sub-zero antarctica cold um and like you immediately like begin to shiver um and if you stay out here too long it's probably like you you suspect if you were to be out here for like more than a minute you would 
take cold damage you would wow. be like having to like save against exhaustion like this is like deep antarctica basically um well i'm kind of going to start walking right inside then <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and you can see there's a big open uh doorway like the main doors uh lead into a kind of like you know foyer uh and there are big braziers like stone and iron braziers filled with fire um that are casting light and heat um and as you do like you immediately start walking and scartha will just bow as you are heading off and be like have a good evening my my lord and lady um i will be i will wait here uh to fulfill our agreement um and then they will just park their carriage up to the side and basically sit on it pull out a little book and they just start reading reading their little book um while they wait um when you step inside uh the the palace is he magically heated so as soon as you step into the sort of like the the room um the icy temperature fades away it's still cold like it's not anywhere what you would consider a pleasant or comfortable temperature like you know you're still like whoa and you can uh -huh. like still see your breath and things but you know it, it's way warmer than it was i'm outside. not gonna die from this cold yes, exactly um and you can already begin to see that up ahead uh the you know there is this kind of big stone pillars that leads to like a staircase and there is a corridor that leads down to the side um uh, no, actually, sorry, no, you're on the, actually by the main sort of grand hall. So it's just like a stone stairway that leads into a grand hall. Before the door, uh, you see hunched over, like having to like crouch down uh, to like actually fit is a frost giant. Oh my gosh. Uh, who has got like a little bow tie uh, made from like what appears to be like leather and fur. So like a little furry bow tie. Yeah. No shirt just like a big shoulder guard with like leather and like horns and stuff sticking out of it. Um, big white frosty beard and hair that's been sort of like tied back um, very neatly and nicely. Um, and he has like a very tiny for his giant hands for you. It'd probably still be massive but in his huge hands, like a tiny little clipboard and like a quill. And like, you know, he's holding it like very delicately in his little hands. Um, and beside him is an enormous mammoth tusk horn wrapped in fur and leather with gilded with like gold runes and things like that. And he's kind of like being set up as like a little uh, like checkpoint before you actually go into the main party. I love it. Um, and he will kind of lean down as you approach. Your invitations, please. And look to Willow Song again, since she's the carrier. Yeah, she will hand it over. Uh, he, he gets it and he's, excuse me. And from his little shoulder, he'll take a little pair of like bone spectacles made from like bones and he puts them on. And it's, it's a tiny letter in his massive hands. And he's just like, <laughs> Very good. And he turns and he blows this horn, oh which gosh. sends this alarmingly loud sound that like completely echoes through the grand hall. People drop like plates of glasses. People cover their ears. They look annoyed at this giant because it doesn't, you don't think this is the first time he's done it. Um, but when he finishes like this, <laughs> like turns, Lady Willow Song, Draconis Viridia. Brew daughter of Shadow Brother the Vengeful and her companion of the evening, Thief King of Kalimshan, Master Assassin, Artemis Intrary. And then he nods at your direction and like a couple of like goblins who are wearing sort of um, their mixture of like dresses and like uh, dinner coats. Um, and it doesn't look like the goblins, it doesn't really matter whether they're male or female goblins, like the dresses and tailcoats are just mismatched amongst uh -huh. them. Like nice. they're just like wearing whatever, um, but they they clap like rapidly and quickly like, huzzah, like, like a couple of cheers <laughs> as you like enter. Um, but most of the other guests is kind of, eh, and then they just go back to like their mingling mm -hmm. conversation. I'm sure you've been at many sort of uh, events of its ilk of like going to like partner parties and things like that, where it's just like everyone stands in the groups that they already know. Yep. And, oh like, yeah, 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 hundred percent. There's like, no, yeah. there's no one like a, a frost giant bellowing whoever walks in, but still, everyone's yeah. everyone's queued off into their groups. Yeah, um, and that's very much the vibe here uh, when you step in, and it's it's pretty busy. There's it's hard to tell the exact number, but you see a myriad of creatures and people from all over the Forgotten Realms and the Plains. Uh, in one corner, there is like a hulking, almost gorilla-like red-furred demon creature. Oh my gosh. Um, and it is like, 
you know, looking around angrily and it's snatching up like haunches of like meat carried by these little blue skinned goblins. It like hatch uh, and like begins eating them away at them. Uh, you see like a, a, a beautiful celestial woman, like with blue skin and golden wings and halo uh, in a sort of evening dress, delicately sipping on some sort of nicked, you know, drink um, whilst conversing with a number of mortals. Um, you think you see the succubi and incubi that Scartha mentioned draped on the shoulders of like this hulking orc with like gray skin and like tattooed patterns all over them emblems of uh Oriel the frost maiden uh one of the goddesses that you have encountered yourself like wearing this emblem like looking very mean and aggressive with these two fiends like in very kind of like obviously like you know demonic clothing just like draped over his arms just like ah and, like walking around um yeah it's, it's a motley scene for sure um welcome to the queen's ball uh, Woo! Here we go. It's, it's heist time. It's yeah. heist time. It's well. It's it's definitely. I I I think I will speak to Willow Song. Mm -hmm. uh, did you happen to get the order of the evening? Uh, There's no set plan. Uh, it is mainly for mingling. The Queen is set to make an appearance later, but uh, there is no. We don't have to worry about any certain uh, schedule. Um, certainly, there will be entertainers. There will be performers. But it is all very. Uh, uh, as and when the queen fancies it. So you have plenty of time. My first suggestion would be to, we need to locate this entrance to the vault. It's hidden somewhere in the castle. Um, check the rooms. It may be in, I sus my assumption would be, it would be in one of the rooms that we cannot, that guests are not allowed to visit, but I do not know. It could, it could be hidden in plain sight in one of these public areas. Uh, there is a, a creature uh, my contact here, um, the Queen's jester, apparently very unhappy with their treatment by the court, uh, was willing to give us three pieces of information. They're a wretched little soul, um, but uh, yes, perhaps they should uh, be able to give us some advisement. Um, I suggest you try and seek them out. I will be trying to divert the attention of the more powerful planar creatures, make sure that they are not looking at you too closely with their magical insights and vision and the like um once you've found the secret entrance it will be warded it will be magically protected um that's when you'll need to let me examine it with my own senses um once we figure out what sort of protections are involved we can then go about disabling them and then we can head into the vault and deal with that i imagine that inside the vault it will be a mixture of locks and traps and other magical protections and we'll need to work together to overcome them to locate epilogue sounds good i will uh i'll take a walk around and look for this jester very good i will go and uh i guess meet the uh, the vips and she'll move off and immediately like she probably actually know before she heads off she stops and will literally just look over to you and almost like want to reach out for your hand, but like kind of hesitates and just says out loud. Uh, no, in your mind, she will say, be careful. And out loud, she will say, I will see you later. And then mm. goes off. But there is this like moment where she looks at you and there is like concern. And then the mask comes on and she smiles mm -hmm. and she immediately makes her way over to the celestial and like makes all the kind of like, oh, hello there. What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. Like goes fully into like, now I'm in work mode kind of uh, yeah. attitude. Uh, leaving you, Tarkle, on your own to begin, uh, yeah, to do whatever you want to do. All right. I want to like, I want to walk the floor as far as the, uh, the ballroom goes and see if mm -hmm. I, if I mean, if the jester stands out to me at all, or if there's yeah. anyone that stands out to me uh, in particular, that, that not so much guests, but I want to be able to know who belongs here, like guards right. and. You kind of want to get your, get your like uh, footing of like trying mm. to get an understanding of it. Okay. Can you make a perception check for me sure. then? Let's, um let's see if you can like spot like things out of the ordinary Ooh. and stuff like that. Uh, 18 plus nine, 27. 27, right. You spend a bit of time just walking around the public areas. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, there, there's, uh, it quickly becomes apparent what the public areas of the party are. The castle is mm. quite expansive, um, but a lot of it is things that you don't think are gonna be particularly relevant. Like there are separate rooms for different things, but the main areas that you currently have access to as a guest are the great hall, which is the main hall that you're in now. 
mm -hmm. that is the you know this is the place where all the mingling is going to be done most of the party is going to happen um the east wing uh which is basically the corridor that connects uh the two sort of main parts of the castle together um the east wing connects to the great hall it also connects to the east tower the antechamber and the and the queen's gallery the queen's gallery is also public as is the east tower um, all of those four locations are available to the public um, all of the other areas are basically guarded there are two guards at every sort of like connection point or every entrance to other areas and the guards vary uh, for the most part the gob the guards are hobgoblins however there are a few elves blue skinned wintry looking elves and eladrin um, who seem to be uh, guards as well. You also pick up on with such a high passive perception that there are several guards posing as guests. Mm. Um, and these appear to be creatures called darklings. Um, and they avoid bright light. Uh, there isn't much light in the party, only in the great hall where there are like dancing lights and magical lights. But even then it's all very dim. Um, no bright light is anywhere in this castle or even in this region of the area. It's all dim light and darkness. And these darklings are dressed um, in sort of like noble attire, but they have big hoods um, and they sort of like keep to the corners. They're drinking, but it's all water, just made to look like alcohol. And they're basically like the secret guards that are actually the ones keeping an eye on everything. And then the door guards are really just there to be the sort of like, you know, they're in full armor with halberds and, you know, there to be the obvious like queen's guards protecting the areas. Um, there's only a handful of these secret guards, these darkling guards, um, and there tends to be one in each each public room um, okay. so each of the public rooms has one of these guards in it gotcha okay that's a good that's a good lay of the land mm. um if i'm in the great hall now uh do i see anyone jesting about uh yes i think well actually no i don't think they would be here in the great hall okay actually. in the yeah. great hall is there uh like a bar to get a drink yeah, there's not so much a bar, but there is um, the goblins, are br like the little blue skin goblins are bringing out uh, like uh, silver trays with drinks on them. Um, and then there is one large long table, which is just constantly being refreshed with like, you know, you know, beautifully crafted glass, like blue glass, uh, you know, goblets and, and things like that, all filled with different uh, liquids. Um, there are like little name, like little placard signs, all written in Sylvan. Do you speak Sylvan? I feel like this was a common language before. I don't speak Sylvan now. Right. So you have no idea what any of these <laughs> things are. Um, like they're all written in this flowing, but also jagged script that is in some other language you don't speak. Um, but they, there's, you know, there's a blue drink. There's a green drink. There's like a yellowy drink. Okay. Um, as uh, all these different kind of things. I think, uh, I, I mean, I think I just want to have a drink in hand and then a, something very light. So I think what I would do is I would, one of the goblins that are walking around, if anything, uh -huh. I would, I would approach one oh. and what, what, what do you have there? Uh, that's a question. It's fine. Um, <laughs> the goblins just, and they've got, uh, we'll say green drinks. Um, oh, uh, my lord, uh, I have uh, some fine, um, uh, some fine uh, sea giant uh, mead uh, here. Is there a price for that? No, no, no. Uh, uh, anything offered is uh, food and drink offered by by us. The staff uh, is given with no price or favor. Aye, thank you. And I'll take it. And oh, yes, Th thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and they sort of like nod and they scurry away. They're yeah. wearing like a little sort of like cute little penny. It's a male, go male goblin, just like a little yeah, dress yeah. and kind of like scampers away. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and you've got this very strong smelling drink. It smells strong. Okay. It Alcohol smells potent. Strong. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to drink it yet, but when I do, yeah, it's going to be a it. Yes. I want to, I want to have a drink in hand. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. That helps. Uh, and then if I don't see, Anything else that's outstandish? I'm trying to. I want to. Do I want to really try to mess with some people with these rules? I kind of do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's shady. Being like, yeah, 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 it's, it's, yeah it's it's shady. It's not what Tarkle I don't think would would ideally go for unless it's gonna aid the mission. But yeah, I think I think I think I'd rather see all the rooms that I'm allowed to see first. So I think sure. I think the way that Scarth had said it, the Queen's Gallery seems like something I want to see. Sure. Okay. Um. So. 
Ah, as you move down into, because you'll need to go into the east wing, which is the connecting corridor, and then you would go into the the, the queen's gallery. Mm. Um, here's a mechanic you wouldn't have known about. Every time you go into a public area, there is a chance oh God. you will have an encounter, and that encounter could be somebody just coming up to talk to you. It could be a guard being like, "Hey, don't I know you from somewhere?" Like it's that kind of like the you know you've got to deal with something. So every time you go into a public area, I need you to roll a d20 for me, and this is just to see if a, if an encounter happens. Okay, okay, okay. I got me nervous, but okay. Uh, I rolled the I rolled the two. I rolled the two. Two's fine. You move into the east wing, um, and yeah, you begin making your way down there. And you see that it splits off. There are two uh, rooms that connect to this. Well, one's not really a room. One is basically like a spiral staircase that leads off with, um, it goes up and down, and you believe that to be the east tower. Um, okay. And it's open. There's no guards patrolling it or anything like that. Um, and then it continues down. And then about midway down, there is an open door that leads into the antechamber. Um, and this kind of appears like another... Uh, castle, palace -y kind of room, very ornate uh, furniture made of like blue, like a uh, sort of blue white wood and silver f uh, fittings. And it's very opulent, almost looks like maybe a sitting room or like a parlor room that you might like take guests into. There's more like tables and chairs for people to sit down on. Um, and currently when you sort of walk past, you hear laughter. Okay. Uh, but then you continue on um, and you make your way into the Queen's Gallery, which is another public room. So I need you to roll another d20. Oh, okay. I rolled a 19. 19. Okay. Uh, so can you roll a d6 for me? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I rolled a four. Okay. So as you move into the Queen's Gallery, it, it, nothing initially happens. So you have a bit of time to check the Queen's Gallery out um, okay. at, at first. But you see it's a long kind of corridor that stretches. It basically mirrors the Great Hall. So like you'd gone from the Great Hall on the north side, uh, sorry, uh, on the south side of the castle. You've taken the east wing to the north side of the castle. And then the, the Queen's Gallery basically extends the same distance mm. connecting the two. Um, and it is a long corridor that is full of statues and paintings of different types and styles. Um, some of the paintings are tiny and they're small, almost, you know, miniature almost, and there's series of them connected together. And then like several of them are enormous. They are like floor to ceiling, 15 foot high, 20 foot wide, like in gorgeous like oil paintings. Like, you know, you might see in like a, you know, a, a king or queen's court in a museum or something for in real life. Mm. Um, like these absolute gorgeous, almost all of the paintings here are of the queen of air and darkness herself. And she is this 10 feet tall, um, blue to sort of almost like blue black skin. Uh, her hair is shockingly white and short on the sides and then braided into like a long uh, fishtail braid that kind of descends down all the way down her back to the floor. Um, growing out of the hair, like in sort of like amongst the braids, you see ice, like gemstones and like patterns made of ice that like are woven in like jewels that glitter and sparkle. Um, she wears a, a simple dress of black studded with, again, similar kind of like icy starry gemstones. Um, but she also wears armor. Like she has a gorget around her neck and she has shoulder pauldrons that descend down her upper arms. Um, her hands themselves look like they have blue ice kind of from the palms going up her forearms. Wow. Um, and she carries like, oh, she either in the background of these paintings or in a scabbard on her side or in the background, she has a sword. She has like a long slender uh, curved bladed sword uh, made of ice itself, black ice. Um, and she looks resplendent, but also terrifying. Like, yeah, she, is yeah. Very she sounds terrifying for sure. Yeah, um, very regal, very uh, sort of like posed well and everything else, but clearly, and always like painted in like harsh landscapes, like mountain ranges or like on a castle's battlements and things like that. Very sort of, um, you, know, uh, you know, very imposing for sure. Mm. Um, and yeah, you can see that there are, there is another guard at the very far end of the Queen's Gallery, connect, which you think would connect to the West Wing, which is off limits. Um, you see another one of these Darkling guards who's just pretending to like, admire the paintings is moving up and down but is clearly there to keep an eye on everybody um there's a couple of guests here a uh, mixture of mortals and what appear to be other fey elves and like elantrin just wandering around um and you've been sort of looking around it and then maybe a sort of a few minutes after you've arrived um as if they followed you from the grand hall uh you're approached by somebody 
Um, this appears to be a human. Uh, he's wearing simple black attire, uh, uh, sort of very, very nondescript. Um, and he will just say, ah, oh there, friend, a fellow, fellow man from, from Faerun, I think. How are you tonight? I'm doing very well. Oh, forgive me. I forget that this place has these bizarre rules. Let us have conversation without any uh, price or, or favor in, in cost, uh, at least. I'm like, actually, like, I, I don't know if Tarkle's stun locked, but Shady is stun locked. That's right. You can take time. Shady don't, can like be just like, give me a second. Let I me, just don't fine. know if like, if I want to just keep disregarding the rules that the queen set up. Yeah, I mean, you can too. It's absolutely fine. Uh, um, Let me just roll a d20. I'm just going to let the dice decide. <laughs> All right, I rolled a five. So, yes, that sounds quite nice. Oh, believe me, I don't. It's just, uh, it's. I'm constantly watching whatever I say and whenever I'm offered a drink, yeah, it's always a worry. Um, I just wanted to say I heard your name when you were entered and uh, well, as a fellow practitioner of a similar field, I wanted to come and introduce myself. It's not every day you get to meet the legendary uh, Artemis Intrary, uh, Barabbas the Grey, and he offers his hand. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Barabbas. Pleasure as well. I'm. Uh, we've all heard stories in the circles uh, of everything, and uh, yes, I just I would have it would have been I would have made a fool of myself if I didn't come and introduce myself. Um, do you still travel with uh, is it Dristowerden uh, much? Uh, I do not, no. Ah, uh, it's a shame. We'd, I'd heard that you two had been quite the rivals in your day. I wasn't sure if you were, if that ever got resolved. Who's to say, honestly? <laughs> just, yeah, no, it's, per it's a perfect like, way of just like dodging these questions left and right. Um, and uh, yeah, he's just like, ah, yes, indeed. It's a, it's a busy world. Uh, what 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 are you doing here? Who was that um, the dragon woman you entered with? I've I've never heard of her before. Uh, a she new is acquaintance. Not not so new, um, but I guess you know, past beyond my time of acting as, you know, yes. in what I used to do. New roles, new people. Ah, I see, I see. Well, always good to try new things. I I myself am out of the the game as well. Retired few years ago i just uh so yes i fully understand and, mm. uh, family no no i've i've never had the pleasure um never had the pleasure myself more i've just i, I guess i just don't have much reason to do it anymore uh, i've made plenty of money i've earned a good reputation just didn't seem a reason to keep on doing it so does he have a drink why? in his hand uh he doesn't no okay I was going to, I'll just, I'll cheers. I'll, I, I'll lift mine and said, Oh, I would cheers to that. If you had one. Oh my, no, no. I, uh, I, uh, wasn't, I've been too afraid to get one just in case these Fay come ask me for demand my, a year of my service or something. In exchange. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I, I would raise, raise a drink myself as well. But, uh, yes, yes. But yes, just wanted to come in and, uh, meet, meet the man, meet the legend. Uh, well, uh, quite humbling. Barabos, I hope you have a uh, a good evening here, and yeah, watch watch what you grab. Ah, thank you, thank you, sir. Will do. Uh, you too, as well. And uh, uh, good luck with the new venture with that uh, very pretty dragon lady. And he'll just sort of like nod and smile mm -hmm. and uh, make his way back. He just he heads off. Um, but yeah, just seemed to be like a fan of. Who felt pretty okay. Felt like a pretty okay interaction. I don't think I got <laughs> swindled. I'm not sure. We'll find yeah, out. We'll, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. All right. Um, so just before, cause I think we're going to have to wrap this episode up in a minute, but let's just figure out like what you want to, so what's the next plan? Like, um, you know, is there anything in the queen's gallery you're looking for in particular, or is there a place you plan on going next? So I, I plan? feel like I, I guess I wanted to check out the queen's gallery a little intently because, uh, my mind is that like, this is where the queen's value, like things she likes to show off. And mm -hmm. since she, uh, I don't know. I, I some some rulers would be like, oh, yeah, all my valuables are here. And even the ones you don't know about. So I just want to, like, kind of do a, a roundabout and see if there's any suspicious. Absolutely. Hey, give me a um, make a this would be an investigation check because this okay. is like not just like looking for stuff. You could make a perception check if you prefer. But what I would say is perception might just give you like a hint of like things that seem out of place. Whereas an investigation check will actually be like you find 
something like yeah i think whatever that's, you're looking for that's more so that i what i I didn't want to be i wanted to do this like i didn't want to be obvious that i'm investigating the room obviously mm -hmm. but like i just want to do a round and really mm -hmm. get a good good eye and feel on things uh 14 plus 10 so 24 24 uh okay can you also make a stealth check for me as well sure. please because i'm assuming you're trying to do this yes you know, non-suspicious nonchalantly <laughs> Yeah, not uh, sure. that is a seven plus 14. So 21. So it's still 21. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, 21 is still very good, uh, but this is an archfey and they're very powerful guards. So I'm going to reduce your disguise score, but just by one. Uh, <gasps> okay. I'm going to drop that down to 17. <laughs> uh it's only by one uh, yeah so but yeah even doing anything so like anything like this even if you're being stealthy and, and trying to like avoid suspicion it's always going to lower your disguise score the the check is just going to determine by how much and so you know one point is like you've done a very good job nobody's actually suspicious gotcha. but the more of these things you do yep. like people are gonna be like that guy is like touching every painting in here yeah yeah, yeah. Like, that's weird like you know um but with those two checks uh, it takes you a bit of time, but you think that you have found something. Ooh. One of the large paintings of the queen stood on sort of a, mounty, uh, a mountainous range with a castle in the background. You detect brilliantly hidden in amongst the line work of the mountains itself in the painting. The painting is actually part of the wall with a frame built around it. And the painting hides a secret door. Oh, I, I, I felt like there had to be something. I don't know if this is the vault, obviously, but I felt like the gallery- like The fact that you went straight here and was like, I want to search this room. I'm like, okay, let me just delete all <laughs> of these other notes I'm I have. No, I'm, it's good, great. I'm sorry, uh, I can go back, I can explore. No, 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 because that is the perfect place of where we're going to end this episode anyway, with you finding this secret door. Whether it leads to the vault, we don't yeah. know, but it is a secret door. Um, and that's where we're going to end this episode. Cool. This little flashback, this little Mark and Shady solo. I, you know, dude, I had time. I had such a great time doing this. this I'm, exci time, I'm excited I'm for the next one. It. Yeah, this is so yeah. much fun. It's cool, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I'm glad you're like really leaning into the heisty vibes as well and like going with it as well because that's perfect. It, it kind of needs a bit of that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we will find out what happens to Tarkle and the rest of this heist uh, next time. See if you can still keep pulling this off. Um, I'm down to 17. I'm nervous. I feel like I, I now I wish I would have re-rolled. I wish I, I could have rolled like a 20, got to 29. It would have been so you good. Have, uh, 29 would have been so good. Yeah. So good. Uh, uh, that's all right. It'd be a certain, it'll be a real shame if there's certain thresholds where things happen. And yeah, be, yeah, that switch. would be awful. It would definitely be awful. <laughs> oh. All right. No, great job. Uh, brilliant RP. Loved it, man. Loved the conversation with Willow Song and Shade and uh, Tarkal as well. Because I think that that's, that's definitely been something that's been like bubbling away for me in the background as that NPC. Is I'm like, I'm glad that she kind of got to have that moment of explaining yeah. some of the reasons why things are happening. So um, that's no, cool. it was really good. Really good. Do you want to shout out stuff? Because it's still a show. We're supposed to tell the people where still we're from. I mean, it's still a show. I mean, the only thing I'm going to, it's always the same thing that I always talk about. It's go watch High Rolls DD. It's my other DD show. I've been doing it a long time. We're finishing up our second campaign. We just did some epic level 17 mega boss battles um like mmo world of warcraft ff14 style raid wow. boss encounter it was dope uh so you can come and check that out uh with the hopeful build-up that we're gonna be finishing that campaign maybe january 2023 and then starting a brand new campaign which i'm very excited about um i'm gonna be who knows when this this video i'm not exactly sure when this is going to come out so who knows True. what else is happening but uh yeah come on check out high rolls Sherlock Humes, pretty much everywhere else on the internet what about you shady penguin yeah well that's where you can find me shady penguin uh, on twitter and youtube and instagram uh but you'll mostly find me uploading videos playing uh video games on youtube or streaming on twitch so follow me over there Ooh. that's what i've been doing for a while now but that's all for me wicked love it man thank you so much uh, and we will see you guys for more night soon stuff very very soon take care bye, bye.